Today I'm here with Terry and we're in Lake Havasu. We're south on the south end of Lake Havasu in a uh, area for that's a 14 day area. We're wrapping up the van build and we're gonna visit with Terry. We're gonna get to know him. We're gonna get to know his rig and his thought processes behind why he lives this way and why he has the rig that he has currently and if he's interested in maybe getting into something else at some point. But uh, before we do that, I just want to mention that Terry's been here through the whole van build and he's been a complete rock star helping uh, Ricky Wood get situated and other people get situated, uh, donating his tools, buying tools to help people. And so I'm super uh, appreciative and I couldn't have expected anything more than that uh, from anybody, but he's really just been here putting out all month. And so I'm really grateful for that. That said, given credit where it's due, let's meet Terry. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's happening, man? Hey, man. You were smart. You wore sunglasses. I'm just staring into the sun. Yeah, it's it's the sun's starting to set, so it's pretty nice here. What year yeah, is it's it? Yeah, it's a 2014 Tioga Montera Class C motorhome. Uh huh. And it's uh, like 26 feet long, and uh, it has a little slide out that goes out. We'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. And. Um, I'm towing a cargo trailer, 20-foot cargo trailer behind it right now. What are these white things on the tires for? Those are to keep the sun off your tires because they're brand new tires I just bought. Yeah. And that's hard on them when you park. So a lot of people will put those over the tires to protect them. So you're just preserving the life of the tire with those? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense. Let's take a look at this trailer. Caught me when I stood got a bunch of tools out. I just changed out my battery today they went bad I had some US batteries and I just bought some Trojan uh, 105 lead acid batteries so you just don't rest man even though you've been helping people build you're still working on your own rig put it well, until the end I didn't have any choice because I my batteries were dying at night and yeah I was down to like 10 volts in the morning I had to turn everything off I couldn't run anything I had to start the engine just to to be able to make coffee right but so, you got squared away you've got your new batteries in yeah, and I'm hoping they work out. I've got 400 watts of solar on the roof and a 400 watt full wave inverter. Um, and what else have I got? I've got a charge controller and, you know, all, all the stuff you need, but it's a small system. I don't need to have you covering your eyes, man. Let's get inside where you don't have to be doing that. You want to see anything else outside? Um, well, we can take a look. Let's take a look at, there's the old batteries. Here's the trailer. What's in here? What I just got a bunch of stuff that I'm still ha hauling, and it's a mess right now. Sorry about that, but it's the way it is. Um, so why saw... wouldn't you just have a dolly to put the car well, on? Well, normally I, I tow the car. I flat tow it. Okay. But this cargo trailer was at my brother's, and he's like, get it out of the. It's time to move it. So I had to move it. So you had this trailer from yeah, before? Yeah, it was back in Tennessee. I've had this trailer for like 20 years, man. It's been mm. a great trailer. It's okay. like a garage that you can move. And it's a great storage unit. Right. So it's cheaper to store stuff in a trailer than it is to go rent a, a storage room somewhere. And pay the extra fuel to haul it. Absolutely. Plus you have it on you. It's with you. I look at a trailer as just a more mobile storage unit. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what That's I That's what have. it is. Yeah. So I guess I've got a bunch of junk in there and I've got my 2000, I think it's a 13 Honda Fit. That's my run around car. And I didn't take it out this time because I was busy every day working and really didn't need it. So, did you get the car after you chose to live a traveling lifestyle? I did, I did. And I found with the motorhome, it's just, if you park in an RV park for like a month or two, um, what I was doing in Florida, it's just really nice to have a car so you can run around and do errands and it's like you live in that town. It's right. like you have a house. Right. So it's really nice to have a, a, a tow, they call it, to tow behind you and have a car to run around, run errands in. Well, and it gets better mileage. It gets like 40 miles to the gallon, so it's what this thing gets terrible mileage. Well, it all contributes to your overall mileage, so it, it pumps it up, you know? Yeah, it, overall average. it gives me better averages. Awesome. Having said that, if you're going to do boondocking, it's easier to have one rig, I think, and mm -hmm. you can get in and out places because it's kind of, you know, challenging to drag this trailer some of the places Jamie goes, you know? Well, it's nice having all the luxury, though, what you have here. Yeah, so... Anyway, that's the trailer. It's got a uh, door that opens out. It's a t it's a car hauler, so I can drive my car in and out of there. It's pretty easy. Yep. Right. I see with the tandem axle and the extra width. Yeah, and it's it does great. I mean, 
I've always checked the bearings when I stop and feel them. They're never hot, so I'm doing really good playing with that. Nice. And then I have a weight distribution hitch. Mm, you see okay. that? We'll take a look. You know, that's, uh, I think it's made by Husky there. And it, I actually bottomed on something. That's why one of those brackets is bent back. I have to straighten it out. Mm. I was going over a road and I bottomed out. But basically, it takes the weight off the hitch and kind of distributes it over the trailer and the tow rig. And it makes it tow really a lot better. Uh, tell me about yourself. I know that we've camped, we camped over the summer and, you know, we've gotten to know each other even better over the last month but for folks that don't know you how is it that you wound up out living in a traveling lifestyle rather than I mean you seem like a young guy you could be working a job still have a house well I retired uh, from the federal government in 2008 and at uh, 53 I did an early retirement and uh, I had to work in a little bit more I was working on a hangar house in Alaska that I was building and I decided that I'm I'm ready to leave Alaska. I spent most of my life living in Alaska. And so I, I, when that house sold, and it was like a year later in 2009, I, I left Alaska with my cargo trailer and my uh, Chevy Silverado truck and went down to my brother's place in Tennessee and dropped off the cargo trailer and took the truck down to a friend's in Florida and was kind of helping him through a rough divorce and ended up spending some time with him, then ended up going down to South America and seeing my girlfriend, traveling around, blah, blah, blah. And and, and then when I came back, I ended up getting a, uh, a fifth wheeler because I thought a fifth wheeler would be the way to go. And I traveled in the fifth wheeler for a while and I found it stressful to drive. It's nice once you get somewhere and you park and it does turn really nice. You can turn circles really small with those. But um, I just found it stressful driving and it was bigger than I wanted. And I ended up selling that and getting a truck camper. And and between that, I also sold my Chevy Silverado and bought a Dodge Dually uh, um, uh, truck with a diesel engine because I needed more power. The Chevy wouldn't wouldn't tow it. So what you're saying is you took an early retirement, but you had travel in your blood. You didn't stay yeah. in Alaska. You didn't you know go someplace and stay. So you, all this time you've had travel in your blood. Pretty much, I mean, when I grew up, we traveled, at least, we moved like almost every year. So my dad liked to travel and I think it got in our blood. And we traveled until I got in the fifth grade basically and I grew up in Prescott and went through high school there. And then I joined the military right out of high school and, and I uh, was in the Air Force as a high voltage lineman and I went over to uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming for two years, Okinawa, Japan for a year and a half and then back to Colorado Springs for nine months in the Air Force and then I decided to get out of the Air Force and then I moved up to Alaska because I had a mom and two brothers living up there. Mm. So that's how that happened and then I spent most of my time up there except for uh, I forget what year it was it was like 88 I think I went to Bermuda and I was there for a year and a half working for the Navy and and then in 2000 I think I went to Spain I was over there for three years and then I went back to Alaska. So anyway I've, I've done a bit of traveling but I've always liked vans Whenever I look at a van, I just get excited and I think vans are cool. <laughs> right. And I, I've had a couple of vans growing up, but uh, never really a good camper van. So I kind of started looking into the van life and watching the blogs and watching you on YouTube. And, um, and I already had this motorhome at the time. So my thought process is, and I've gone through a couple other rigs we don't have to bore you with. My thought process was to learn as much as I can about the vans, so I picked the right one this time. Okay. Because it gets expensive buying and selling rigs, and you end up, you know, spending more money than you need to. So it's hard to know the right rig, and everybody's got an opinion on that. The Class C is pretty comfortable. I'm probably a lot more comfortable than some of these folks, but the mobility of a van is kind of cool. So okay. I'd like to build one, and that's why I wanted to come to the van build to get some experience building. Most of my background's electrical, and, and I did some carpentry work. I've built porches, and I've built garages, and I built this hangar house, and my brother was a carpenter, so I grew up around woodworking. But I want to learn more, and as you know, I'm planning to go to a boat building school so I can build the awesome, coolest, you know, camper van. <laughs> Almost as good as uh, Lou's. Well, <laughs> see. I mean, this begs the question, after the research that you've done, what what are you kind of landing on as the best rig at this point? At Although this, that could change. It could always change. I mean, at this rig, for me, I it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to go off-road like you do, you need a four-wheel drive. And I'm not so much into the off-road thing as you are, I think. 
sense. But for me, uh, I think uh, like a U-Haul box fan would work out really well because it's got mm. straight sides and it's easy to build on, and uh, it's you can stand up in it, and they're cheap to buy compared to a, I thought maybe a Ford Transit would be the one that I'd want or a Sprinter, but you know they're thirty-five thousand dollars for the Ford Transit, so you have a lot of money invested in that to try it out. Right. And I think if you buy a, a, a U-Haul van, a used U-Haul van. You can always sell that and get your money back out of it without being hurt too bad. So my motto is, if you can buy something and turn around and sell it in five months or a year and get most of your money back, then it's a good adventure, you know? I'd be willing to bet that those U-Haul vans have about the same, if not more, clearance than mine, and mine's been raised. So They probably do. You know, those, those commercial vehicles have a lot of clearance. Yeah, they do. And uh, there's one, I'm sure you've seen the website, DreamSide Out. He did one. He has a single axle U-Haul van that he built his home out of. And he lives up in uh, Washington, and it's pretty nice. And he parks in it and stealth camps. And So anyway, that's kind of where I'm leaning at the moment. And I could build something now, but I thought, why not take the time to, to get a little education and learn more? I'd love to go to like a, a tiny house building seminar or something and just get some more skill set before I finish building whatever it is I'm going to be in. So it's an adventure. It doesn't have to happen today. Why wouldn't you just buy another, if you're talking about a, a U-Haul, why wouldn't you just buy another Class C or Class B that was built to be lived in from the factory? I could do that, and, and if you could write, find the right deal on one of those, that, that would be okay. That Most of the way they're built is junk, you know, RVs. Okay. They're just junk. And I'd like to do one myself so I can insulate it really well, and I can put in there what I want, and I don't have to be stuck with, you know, the layout of the kitchen the way they did it. And I just think it'd be cool to build your own. Customization, the, the durability is a lot different. You know, I know that uh, when... And cost cost is a lot different i know that when uh, vehicles are made from the factory to be lived in weight is always a consideration price is always a consideration at the expense of materials so yeah i mean there's there's a huge cost i mean this was like forty four thousand dollars and it was used so i could build a heck of a you know cargo van i think for that absolutely and spend a lot less too i mean you know anyway that's that's what got me into this and that's why i'm here and I thought it would be a good thing to come and support the effort to help a lot of people that don't know how to do anything or need help doing whatever they're doing. And, right. And it's a learning experience as well. So I've learned a lot. Well, I sure here. appreciate you being here. Uh, what are you doing, man? You're gonna you're gonna stay in the United States. You're gonna build yourself a rig and travel around the states. You're gonna fly away to another country. What what's up your sleeve for the next? Like, what's your five, ten year? Do you have an idea of what you're gonna be doing? Well, I. I don't for sure, but I have kind of directions. I'd like to have a sailboat. Hmm. I'd like to do some sailing, living on a sailboat. Um, that's why I want to go to the boat building school. Uh, I may do some more traveling overseas. I've done quite a bit of that. I've been to a lot of places. Um, it just depends on who I meet and what feels right. And every day I wake up, I get to decide. So, I mean, I went to a, an RV technician school thinking maybe I'd work as an RV tech, but I haven't yet. But it's coming right. handy, you know, because uh, you're around RVs all the time. Well, mainly that I don't have to pay for a mortgage and I don't have to have insurance on a house. I mean, I can an RV, I think, is cheaper than a house. and um, You get to go wherever you want. You get tired of a place, you just go. And so the mobility is pretty cool. Well, yeah, and you're saving a ton of money without all the entanglements of like a first and last deposit or HOA fees or property taxes. I mean, so at some point it would be nice to have a home base maybe with a big barn or a garage I can put the RV in and then leave my tools and things and then do short trips and travel. I think that works out for some folks. Um, it's nice to have your stuff with you when you travel. Yeah. And there's always something you wish you had. And um, I wish I had more tools with me. I'd love to have more, you know, a, a table saw and a chop saw and a few more items that would make these projects go a little easier. It was tough out here having to try to do these builds and make them come out right without those kind of things, so those equipment, that equipment. But uh, um, having a shop to work in is, is the ultimate for building anything, as you know. So you're committed for doing it out here in the desert to begin with because everything is done with solar chargers and generators and right. dust and four-wheelers driving by and giving us dust baths every night. I mean, right. there's downsides to living here. If somebody's watching this and they're considering living the traveling lifestyle, 
what advice would you give them? Um, I guess mainly is that, you know, do it in little spurts and try it, you know, get it, start small, you know, like, one of the things I recommend to folks is get one of those little pop-up campers that you can tow behind your car and start doing outings and, and seeing how you like it for the weekend. And then you're not invested too much if it's not for you. And then the more you, you learn about it, the more you're around people, you can talk to them and learn from them. And um, you can you can move up to di different rigs. Um, if you want to do a van, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be stuff you buy at a Salvation Army and you put in there and you can make it livable really quick. All you need is a, you know, a cot and a futon mat or a, and a Coleman stove and an ice chest, you know, and you're ready to go. You can go living in a cargo van. What about this lifestyle gives you the most happiness and peace? Oh, boy, these deep questions, Jamie. Gee whiz. Um, I think it's kind of cool the camaraderie is probably the neatest thing. In these groups like this, you're never lonely because you've always got somebody to talk to. There's always a campfire to go sit around at night and everybody's friendly and they're glad to, to talk with you and share with you. And if you need something to say, hey, do you got any uh, half inch nuts or any bolts? I'm, I'm short on some. Or you got any uh, um, baking soda? I, I needed some baking soda today for my batteries, you know, to neutralize the battery acid that was all on the bottom of my battery case. And Melissa had some. And you know, and they give me a ride to town to pick up some stuff. And it's just, everybody helps each other out. So it's more of a community than you'll see uh, in a lot of cities, I think. Unless you've been there a long time and you know a ton of people. But um, So it's it's low stress, too, because you don't have to go anywhere if you don't want to. You can just sit around and take it easy. So, And then when you get tired of it, like now, it's getting kind of cold. And we're all getting tired of that. We're all moving south, man. We're going to turn the key and go. So it's time that to go. That's a great feature that goes with this lifestyle. Yeah. Isn't it? And after a couple weeks, I'm ready to hit the road. I'm ready to go to the next place. And, and so the adventure always waits for you. And there's that feeling of excitement when you know, and you get on the road and you're driving down the road and, you know, there's the unknown ahead of you, but it's going to be fun because it's adventure and you're done with that behind you. Yeah. You know, I so. totally agree. And I totally understand exactly what you mean by that. I sometimes feel like I'm, happiest that or I, I don't know if happiness is the right way to say it but there's a certain energy to being packed up and turning the key to go to a new place and being on the road to go to a new place it's just this excitement that there aren't many things that i think of that are quite like that and everything you have is with you everything is, is in your home is with you so no matter where you go you're at home if you go to Walmart, you got everything you need. You go, oh, I, I forgot to get what size that was, that, uh, that tool I was going to change out. And you go, oh, it's in my RV. I'll go get it. And it's yeah. right there in the parking lot. So it's kind of cool in that respect uh, that you get to travel. And if you want to stay in RV camps, that, that option's open to you. There's some cheap ones down here in the south. Mm. You know, if you do long term, you can stay there for like 100 or $200 a month. So I'm amazed how much cheaper they are out here in the west than back in Florida and on the east coast. Yeah. It's a whole different feel out here. It seems like the Southwest is a lot more lifestyle friendly to what we do, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Yeah, they're more so that way. So yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I've met tons of people and everybody I've met's been really friendly. Everybody helps each other out. And I don't think I ever heard a harsh word from anybody. You know, no fights, no trouble. When people have a couple of drinks, they laugh at each other, but it's not like a, you know, people get drunk and get obnoxious it's not like that and everybody watches each other and the only problem we have is with the people that live here you know and ride motorcycles and four-wheelers and put dust in our face but the people in our group we never have a problem yeah it's a pretty good community and it's it's always changing there's always people coming in and going out yeah. for whatever reasons that they're coming in or going out and i really enjoy the novelty of it yeah, if you had any questions for me, you could just write them here on the YouTube channel and, and I'll respond, you know. Okay, great. Can you give us uh, the nickel tour? Yeah, basically, oh, I wanted to show you how this works. This is the RV in its traveling mode. Uh, it's got the slide in. You get a good vantage point for this. And so it's a mess right now and, you know, it's lived in. I borrowed this uh, um, Wave 6 heater from Melissa to try it out tonight, mm. so that's why that's sitting there. But it's got a front, you know, with two seats and it's comfortable seating. And then it's got a queen bed overhead, which I basically store all my clothes and jackets and things and tools. And we've been working a lot, so that's why it's in the condition that it is. What? 
So this is uh, like the dinette and it'll make into a, a bed to sleep probably like two kids. The table goes down and the pads, these backrests put it, go into the middle and so it makes a bed, but it, I wouldn't want to sleep in there, although I have. And okay. the, the queen bed is up above, I think you got that. Okay. And it's, this is like the galley, you know, the kitchen um, area. So I, it's got a, it's got an oven and three burners. Do you use the oven much? No. Okay. No. I almost always cook out of a skillet. You, you can. I've cooked pizza in it before, and it works. It works well. Okay. But I don't use it that often. And it's got you know a pretty good size freezer with a bunch of junk in there. And how is that, that powered? How does that? This is powered off of propane when I'm uh, off grid when I'm dry camping like this. It has electricity going to it for the controls, but it's run off of propane. But when I plug into shore power, it automatically switches over to electricity. And what it heats kind up of a... A, heats up a little element that makes it work okay what's your range as far as before you need to go in and re-up on the propane um typically depending on how much i'm using and cooking anywhere from two weeks to a month if i'm just if i'm in an rv camp i'm using very little propane because the refrigerator isn't running and i'm cooking so i can go for sure a month so it's ac at that point you just plug yeah. in shore power it's and get ac, AC. it's a three-way uh fridge yeah 12 volt uh doesn't propane. have 12 volt it's, okay. it's propane or 120 volts gotcha and most what most people don't realize if you get a three-way 12 volt refrigerator that 12 volts is only designed to work when you're driving it'll run your battery down Super quick hungry. if you park and try to run it on 12 volts it's for when you're driving to keep it going and i let this go on propane while i'm driving and we've talked about that in my RV technician school, and it's fine. Leave it going. Even when I get gas, I'm, most of the time I leave it, leave it running. So there are solar, there are refrigerators that will run on solar. And this is one that came with the RV when it was uh, being built that isn't really set up to run on solar. What's the difference? Well, this is a Dometic refrigerator. I think the ones that run on solar, they still have to go 12 volts to the refrigerator or they don't run on propane so they're 12 volts either either off your battery or through the inverter 120 volts tell me about Little chest type freezers tell me about your furnace you've got a, a heater here that you're testing out yet you also have a furnace why wouldn't you just use the furnace that was uh, built into it because the the fans for the furnace and you need the fan for it to operate they're really hungry uh, electricity hungry crit critters you know if you run off your um, your fan motors and the furnace, they'll run your batteries down too quickly. So that's why most people don't do it when they're dry camping. Those furnaces aren't set up to just put out heat without the blower. No, they, they would won't overheat. Do. No, the there's old, no switch to turn that blower off. No, the, that's okay. why the old the old trailers that had the catalytic heaters are really wonderful to have because there's there's no draw on your batteries. It's just propane and the catalytic heater and has heat just through convection it doesn't use a fan okay that makes sense what else can you show us how about the bathroom and stuff People basically I've never seen this before might want to see that basically you can kind of come back and look hold on a second okay I gotta push stuff up in here close it down this is my towel to, to take care of this stuff here. you we'll can tell I'm ready for this <laughs> you can <laughs> edit that out we'll just give folks a quick peek this is what the bathroom looks like in these Toyogas or at least in this one yeah, it's just got a... So you can shower. How much water can you hold? Fresh water. I've got about uh, 50 gallons, I think. Okay. How long does that last you out here, dry camping? Well, be out here, you know, it's very acceptable to not have a shower every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you kind of get into that lifestyle, and you don't waste as much water, and so you conserve it. If I take a shower every day, probably two weeks. And if I'm good. taking if I'm taking a navy shower, that's just right. get wet, soap up, and rinse. Right. And but if you want to conserve it, then you you do you know baby wipes or you know spray bottle showers that kind of thing. I'll show you the. You want to see the water tank? Sure. Please. Come back over Let me here. Get out of your way. So this is a short queen bed, and uh, and it's got a nice mattress. And I it's been so cold at night that I pull this um, forty below. Arctic Dark Vader sleeping bag over top of me to stay warm because okay. it's so dang cold in here. I don't think you're going to be able to see this without light. But Probably there's light. the water tank. Yeah. And I'm about half full, so see, I've got a lot of water left. That's a neat tank. How long do you camp out in the in the wild by your, you know, at I don't, time? I haven't, I don't do that much of this dry camping. Before I came with you guys, I typically go to RV parks. You know, for 300, 350 a month, I have all full services and 
there's a town there I could ride my bike to a store, that kind of thing. So there isn't much cause that you would be out someplace for two weeks to use that water up. You'd be in town. Yeah, and if I'm in if I'm in town and I'm in an RV park, I'll connect to to utilities at the RV park. So I won't use that water at all. I'll use the shore power and and the shore water as well. Okay. And the shore septic hookup, so I can be there as long as I want. And then it has a microwave. Do you use that microwave much? I use it all the time. Okay. In fact, when I want to heat something up, out here, this is a little vanity. I should get out of the way here. Nice. So there's the, you know, I could have done without this. I don't use it that much, but it's there. Okay. And um, so if I would have gotten a larger inverter, because there's my inverter right there. It's the 400 watt KISS inverter I got at West Marine when I was in Key West. That's pure sign. I've been pretty happy with it for a sign, but it's not large enough to run my coffee mister coffee maker okay. thing that I have here. It's a brew and go. So that I think that draws like maybe 1200 watts or something and the microwave draws at least that much. So I can't run those on that inverter. It's too small. So when I make coffee, I heat up water in this thing and I pour, I pour water through a, a put a paper filter in here and pour and I grind up coffee and put it in there and and I just pass it through to a cup and that makes my fresh coffee. Okay. I like your uh, coffee cup. Oh yeah, Key West. Key West. Yeah, yep. Key West. Do you have any medical considerations that you need to address on the road? Not really. I mean, I've had some challenges with my knee lately, but um you don't I have, have ongoing prescriptions or anything that you need I, to I yeah, I have to get to through the VA, I get uh, um, Synthroid for uh, thyroid problems, but um, that's the biggest one. And you're just able to go to different uh, locations? Or I, I call them and give them an address and they'll send it to the where I tell them. So even if there wasn't one in that city, you just call a central number and they mail it to you? Yeah. So if you have VA benefits, you don't have to worry about that in a traveling lifestyle? Right. And okay. I, what I used to do is get it at Walmarts. So I had the prescription and I could go to any Walmarts and get my prescription. And that's a lot easier than dealing with a VA prescription uh, system. But they gotcha. kind of forced me into it this last time and I'm trying it. Have you had any bad experiences living this way? Like wraps on your door at night? What are you doing here? Keep it moving? Never, never. But I haven't done that much stealth camping either. Mm, okay. I mean, I've always been with a group like you guys or I've been in dry, uh, or in RV parks, I'm sorry. So. Did you see the TV? Yeah, I think I panned over to that. How are you picking up signal with that? I'm not getting any signal out here. Would it be off the off-air antenna? Yeah, okay. it's through the antenna. But uh, if I if I was able to get a signal, and I was when we were up at um, the last campground. Oh, that were right next to the tower. So I was getting a good signal there, but I'm not here. And so that it's just a normal 120 volt TV, and I run it through the inverter to power it up. And that did not come with the camper. It did. Oh, okay. It did come in. And what's nice about this one, let me show you this. I don't, I don't know if I need to turn it on, but it has this, ah, there goes my MiFi hotspot. It has this really cool hinge system uh -huh. that lets you store it and move it around. So you, you can set it out and you can kind of adjust it where you want it. So you could sit at your table, work on your computer and keep up yeah. with the scores on the football or yeah. whatever. So it's quite quite handy for that. And I really like this one. Some mm -hmm. of them don't, this one has a locking pins that when you fold it up, okay. that it locks in, in against there. You just pull this thing. Up. And did that come with the rig or did you it buy did. that special? No, it came with it. Okay. So there, so it's locked for storage now when I travel. And then I have all the indicators that you have. They tell you your your uh, your battery condition, your your gray water, your fresh water, your, your black water Similar. tanks. All this stuff right here. It's kind of a central control panel. Yeah, like uh, if I come over here and push that, it tells me I have half, and it's pretty accurate for the fresh water. That's okay. my tank back there. And the gray water's at half, and the black water's, it says that it's three quarter, but I don't believe it. Propane says I'm at a quarter, and it's better than that. And then there's my main battery and my um, auxiliary battery. It says they're three quarters. That's the one that I just put in. So. They're not completely accurate, but they're not bad. It gives you an idea. And this is where I turn on my um, my hot water heater to take a shower or get use hot water. And this is the water pump. And this is how I can start the generator for either from here or up at the driver's seat. I can start the generator. And you would use the generator if you were going to run the microwave? Yeah, to run the microwave or the uh, the coffee, coffee maker, maker or something. But mainly just I use it for the microwave. And you need to run your generators at least once a month anyway 
just to keep them exercised because they gum up if you don't run them regularly. That, that generator pulls uh, fuel off of the main fuel it tank? It does, it does. And it's set up to not drain the fuel tank? It's set up so that um, if you get down to like, I think it's a quarter of a tank, the generator, the feed for the generator has like a little spout that sticks up. So um, if your fuel gets down to below that point, then the generator won't get fuel. That way you won't run your tank out of gas and not be able to drive somewhere. So it's a fail safe for the generator so that you won't get stranded and you know, run your fuel dry. Gotcha. You do? Oh, oh the slide out. Let's do that. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of transforms this thing into a much bigger rig. Basically, it has all these safeties in it. You have to set the power brake. You put that thing in. in uh, you, you put it in park. You turn, it, turn the key on. And now I can push the slide out button. And it won't let you do it and don't do all that stuff. usually have this open. I don't remember it being this big the other day. I, I normally have the awning out, but um, because the wind was blowing and it was cold, I pulled it in the other night. And uh, it really makes it feel a lot bigger when you have oh this much space. It just kind of transforms it. And so I have room in here to do push-ups, which, you know, I don't always do. I have <laughs> my lounge chair. Sometimes I move it over here. So let's go outside and I'll show you the, okay. uh, the awning. This has the newer type awnings. Most awnings are mechanical. This one's pretty cool because I've got moves. Push this button and it goes out. So it's kind of handy to have. I know we were taking advantage of it the first couple of weeks of the van build, trying to get rigs as close as we could to it to be in the shade. Yeah, we were looking for shade back it then. It was so hot, and now it's chilly. It's funny. We just hit right at the right time, didn't we? And now in the shade, you're looking for warmth. You're putting a sweater on if you're in the shade. I mean, I'm cold right now in a t-shirt. Right. Well, the sun is the sun's starting to set. Probably about mm, maybe 10 or 15 minutes away from being behind the mountains. Yeah, and it drops quick when the sun goes down. What's next for you, speaking of cold weather? Um, I'm just going to work my way south and try to find warmer weather. Probably go down towards uh, Quartzsite or maybe maybe to Algodonas. I don't know. We'll see. But um, stay warm and head south. That's my motto. Right on. Well, thank you very much for giving us a glimpse into your, your lifestyle and your thought processes behind it and showing us the Tioga and your van. If folks had any follow-up questions, maybe I didn't answer or ask all the right questions or somebody has something, could they ask questions in sure. the notes? Yeah, just ask questions comments? and I'll answer them on YouTube. Okay, cool. So that'll work. All right, man. Well, thanks again for helping out during the van build and I look forward to seeing you down the trail. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks <laughs> for everything, Jamie. Yep. See ya.